flames of war heated the heart of Manchester. In one of the fiercest raids of the German Blitzkrieg on Britain, a storm of bombs wreaks havoc in this proud city. But they leave it a prouder city still. Manchester will remember the horrors of that attack as long as the heart of the North continues to beat. But she will remember its glories too. The selfless service and dauntless courage with which her people met their hour of trial. The firemen who risked their lives hour after hour saved much that might have been lost, but still the damage was great. This is on the corner of the old marketplace with its wealth of historical associations. Yet another link with the past has been destroyed. The fire engine's name, not inappropriately, is Coventry Climax. Coventry and Manchester have a new kinship of adversity. That was Martin's Bank. Corporation Street, that famous thoroughfare, is a network of hoses as the firemen struggle to gain control of the flames. The Nazi bombers have used on Manchester the technique of destruction that they've already tried out in London, a combination of high explosive bombs with incendiaries. The Cooperative Union building burns, very well known in Manchester, a symbol of cooperative effort. But destruction is easier than construction, and the culmination of years of cooperative effort can be destroyed in a few hours or less. Nevertheless, the spirit of cooperation cannot be destroyed, and Manchester people cooperate in the Blitz as never before, fighting against the forces of destruction. Another CWS building, the furnishing block in Balloon Street. The famous Mitchell Hall blazes. Outside the CWS central premises in Corporation Street, the company's own unit of the Home Guard takes duty to keep people away from the danger zone. Employees must show their passes as they go back to business as usual, or if not quite as usual, still back to business. Their place of business is damaged, its windows shattered and gaping, but these Manchester people carry on. Through two terrible nights, the Blitz went on without cease. Now it's over, and Manchester gets to work to clear up the mess. This was the Mitchell Hall, where the meetings of the Cooperative Wholesale Society have been held for many years. From that platform, speakers addressed the members at half-yearly and annual meetings at which the Society's policies were formed. The platform and proscenium are here seen remodelled according to German ideas of beauty. The Nazis spare nothing. Their aim is to dislocate the life of the city and terrorise the people. Their military objective is morale. But instead of destroying it, the bombs have made the morale of Manchester stronger than ever. This desert of debris was the roof of the CWS furnishing block. Here in the midst of Manchester, one may study something of the genius of Germany. But there are more practical lessons to learn too. For instance, observe that in the midst of chaos, a tall, strong, modern building stands unscathed, a new CWS building while nearby, the cooperative union offices housed in an older type of building have the whole of their top floor gutted. Again, you will see now the scars left by incendiaries that failed to burn through the roof of the strong bank building. Seven incendiaries burned themselves out here in vain. One bounced off the parapet onto an old building below. There's the result, destruction. And here is Piccadilly, Manchester's Piccadilly. It was famous too. But loss and damage do not destroy the spirit or the power of such a place as Manchester. It is still the centre of the cotton trade and still a great dynamo of British industry in war as in peace. This was Miller Street and that was the great building of Baxendale. Down at the bottom end of Market Street, St. Mary's Gate lies riven apart by high explosive bombs. The Victoria Arcade is in ruins, its buildings blasted and burned, its great dome shattered. This was the Oldham Road goods station, an important transport point. 
The roof is a bare skeleton of twisted girders. But over these bare bones, the sunlight of another day is breaking. It breaks on a Manchester that still lives and works on in spite of all this ruin. The coal exchange, historic centre of trade, shared the city's ordeal. Centuries-old buildings in the shambles suffered only from blast and are now in use again. But the well-known Falstaff Hotel is an empty shell. The famous old marketplace of Manchester, all that remains of it. Another place equally famous, the Free Trade Hall, scene of many historic political meetings and home of the Halle Concerts for Manchester is a great centre of culture as well as of commerce. Culture and commerce suffer alike. This was the Royal Exchange, where vast business in cotton was transacted. And this was the volunteer chapel of Manchester Cathedral, a place of worship desecrated. It is so easy to destroy, so hard to build, but not too hard for the hearts and hands of Manchester. After the war, a new city will rise. Now, the first step is to clear away the ruin, bring down the broken walls of what were once busy stores and peaceful homes. There's a grim joke for the workers in the fact that one of the hauling engines belongs in reality to Collins Fair. The Works Department and the ARP salvage squads are helped by the fire brigade with their great extension ladders. The army lends a hand to civilian workers in clearing away debris. Men of the Pioneer Corps in action. Some of the masonry is shattered to powder. Some stands firm and will help to rebuild the city. There's a sermon in stones. The Empire lends a hand too. This canteen for workers is a gift from the West Indies, from Trinidad and Tobago. And here's a friend from a friendly land, Wendell Wilkie. Autograph? Sure, but where's that fountain pen? President Roosevelt's famous opponent in the presidential election has come here to see for himself, so the Lord Mayor shows him round. Mr. Wilkie is escorted past the cathedral, and he sees for himself what the Germans have done to Manchester. He realises to the full the importance of this attack on Britain's great industrial centres, but he realises also how British industry is carrying on despite everything. In Piccadilly, the American visitor surveys the havoc of the bombs. Mr. Wilkie makes friends with a soldier of Manchester. The army keeps on with the job. We've got to get things straight. Though very little rebuilding will be undertaken in bombed areas till the war is over, important work must go on. So workmen at a damaged building lay a new floor, a foundation for the future. This is the CWS administrative block. These firemen you are watching were all of them through the blitz. And what are they doing now? preparing for more trouble if it comes, keeping up constant practice. These CWS home guards were in the thick of it too, and they too carry on. So do the staff. The vans go out, the employees come on duty. Manchester is justly proud of its unshakable men and women. On the roofs of the battered city, hatched up and carrying on, the spotters watch the sky, and down below it's business as usual.